Ranching in coexistence with a predator presents complex challenges that requires a balanced approach to ensure both the livelihoods of rancher and the conservation of predator species. This is especially true for those hoping to thrive in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, the last intact ecosystem outside of the Serengeti and home to threatened apex predators like wolves and grizzly bears. Our guest today has an innovative nature tech solution which enables shared landscapes with livestock and predator species, helping ranchers respond to threats that mitigate conflict. The technology goes a step further to monitor ecosystem health as well. Enjoy the short episode. Please like, comment, and share the channel below to stay apprised of solutions to creating a better world. If we can train these tags to understand fight or flight response and accelerometer, then we can really start looking at, you know, the movement and the photosynthetic process of plants as as cattle are grazing these plants, and, and how do we show uh, measurable data around the relationship of grazing ungulates and soil health and grass and climate and all the things. Welcome to Nature Is, where we brainstorm, share innovative ideas, and have conversations to stir our spirits and elevate our actions for a better world. Well, Malou Anderson Ramirez, founder of Teal Tags, land steward and rancher. Welcome to Nature Is. It's such a pleasure to have someone from Montana on, on this episode. Thank you, Laura. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, I'm, I'm looking out my window and I can see Tom Minor Basin here over the, the, the fields of spring snow. And you know, I think it's maybe a, a fitting place to start since we are both fortunate enough to live in, in such an incredible place and knowing how much of the place-based nature of where we are is the rationale behind Teal Tags. Perhaps we can start by having you tell everyone where you are in the world in the Tom Minor Basin and the significance of, of this. Yes. Well, same. I'm looking out my window at a beautiful day. There's lots of snow around me on the mountains. Tom Miner has a really special, unique energy to it. And I think part of it is just that it's really uh, based on an, a very abundant ecosystem, especially in the wilds. And so that goes from the landscape itself to the wildlife who come through and, and call the place home. And it's a, one of the headwaters to the Yellowstone. Uh, so there's a lot of energy and water coming out of up the basin. Absolutely. And, um, and maybe before we go into some of the, the details of, of teal tags, can you speak a little bit about what it's like to, to make an effort to, to mitigate that potential conflict when you have livestock in an area that has a lot of these predators? Um, I think that would, that would be a really helpful illustration. So I think first and foremost is the, is the mindset and the paradigm shift of, of, of deciding to and, and participating in an agricultural operation in a wild place. And then there's the tools. So we have we use a lot of uh, electric fencing. We use a lot of herding techniques. We have grazing plans. We we try to keep our cattle really organized. We're we're managing substantially what is out there. And in that substantial management, we can make really um, sound and strategic um, decisions around where the cattle are, why, uh, what does the water in the soil look like, what is the the ground, the grass. Um, the, the, what are the wildlife doing? How are they moving in comparison to where those cattle are in the grazing plan? And, um, and all of those things are connected. Um, and so really just being, again, being really curious about what's happening and, and participating in that story. I think we sometimes lose track of the, um, the ecological benefits of grazing animals. And of course, in this ecosystem. Originally, we had bison um, that were coming through. And, and maybe you can just speak to that um, impact, that positive impact on the landscape, and then how some of the practices that you're adopting with respect to moving cattle um, are intended to emulate that. And then we can, then we can go into some of the specifics of, of teal tags. And I, I think those red threads will make sense to everyone. Sure. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Good grazing practices we are, are needed for a healed planet, in, in my opinion, and, and that of many people in regenerative ag. We need those grazing ungulates still, um, and we've unfortunately 
uh, really wounded a lot of the massive herds that used to be here or completely decimated them com- you know, altogether. Empowering and supporting producers that are doing the right things, moving cattle in ways that are, again, uh, strategic and curious and, and planned, um, we're seeing huge benefits. And on our ranch alone, just, you know, trying to keep things more covered. You know, we grew up in, an, in a conventional operation. And so in my opinion, um, you know, not spraying chemical, that's all of all the things that used to be so normalized. We have a, a bee person who has found a, 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 a very threatened species of bee on the place um, in, in where grizzly bears are digging out roots and, and, and so forth. So it's just this magical world. And we're really happy to be, to, to be watching it come come alive again. It's wonderful to be helping it along, but also knowing and understanding that it has its capacity to do all the things it needs to do if we can just be there to support it and be a partner um, of it, a peaceful partner of the work. So so maybe you can tell us a little bit, now that we have this, this fulsome background about teal tags and how it, how it came to be, um, because it's a great story. And I think a really inspiring example of, um, of a nature tech solution. The first phase of Teal Tags is to, was to create a, you know, communications in the rural areas, first and foremost, especially high vegetation areas like timber. How do we get that communication straight to a smartphone if we have a tag, a GPS tag out on those cattle? Um, satellite is, is definitely the future and what, where we'll go, but it's still too expensive. And again, it's really rooted in this like, a graspable price uh, for producers to to actually even utilize. Uh, Anything out there right now is just so expensive. We've created, boy, probably, I think we're on our eighth rendition of a tag, which is really exciting. Uh, and it's a solar capable capability. So it has a little solar pack on it. And, and now we're training, tagging data, you know, creating our algorithms. And so lots of exciting things. And then in phase two, that goes into the climate data. That goes into sort of ideas of if we can train these tags to understand fight or flight response and accelerometer, then we can really start looking at, you know, the movement and the photosynthetic process of plants as as cattle are grazing these plants and and how do we show uh, measurable data around the relationship of grazing ungulates and soil health and grass and climate and all the things. So how do we do that? How do we use these tags to create some of those data sets that are going to be really important moving forward in climate infrastructure and also promoting uh, ungulates on the landscape, promoting regenerative ag and the ranchers and um, all the all the things that we need in order to really help heal the planet. Maybe just give a, a little bit of um, context to how some of the local policies are actually helping ranchers. So, for example, if a an animal is killed by an apex predator, by a wolf or a grizzly bear, there are policies in place in the West that can give those ranchers compensation, but they need to find them in time. And so I think this is another really crucial bit of what your technology is providing. Maybe you can just um, elaborate on that point a bit, because I'm not sure that many of our listeners, particularly overseas, will understand that nuance without without your description. Yes, thank you. That's such a good point and a huge piece of teal tags. Um, so yes, it's really important to find those carcasses, the, the animals that get that often will get depredated upon by wolves and bears, especially in you know north of Yellowstone and everywhere. And there are compensation programs through U.S. government and state dollars that compensate those producers for for those losses if it's a predator loss. And these can be upwards of a three to one, four to one, six to one ratio of a market value of an animal. So finding those carcasses is really important. Um, and you have to find them within about 12 to 24 hours in order for it to even be uh, an accurate wildlife investigation by an investigator that comes up. Uh, if it's just um, bones and skin left, to be blunt, it's, it's not enough. We have to have more than that. So range riders with teal, with the capacity to, with teal tags and that tech could find those carcasses even faster and get those compensations to the producers, which again helps their bottom line. Um, helps them stay where they need to stay. Uh, so it's it's all very important economically as well. So in a, in an ideal world, um, uh, you know, a land steward like yourself would see the elevated heart rate or respiration rate of an animal, and you would yeah. you would understand that there was an anomaly in um, in the data of the herd. You would see where it was located, and you could potentially prevent that predation because. 
um, as you just alluded to, you know, very often once a bear attacks um, livestock, it, particularly if it's a female with cubs, it can teach these um, these habits, which inevitably only becomes bad for the bear. So mo the more of those instances that are avoided, um, the better it is for for the for the grizzly bear, or sorry, for yeah, well, for the grizzly bears. <laughs> And, for and better management water. for the producers, better management for the producers, because then if we had more, if we had these tags on a lot of cattle, we would know when the herd is stressed. And, and then that's better data for the future on those grazing plans. Like, you know, boy, probably we shouldn't maybe have the cattle in this area during this time of year because it was, they were consistently more stressed during that time. Um, so let's shift and adapt our management style and, and not expect the bears and the wolves to adapt to us. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on the the ways that ungulates and migratory um, species are actually helping with carbon sequestration and how that actually improves the landscape. So maybe give us a little bit more detail on um, on how that has some other climate co benefits in the long run that you're foreseeing. Yeah, you know, I tend to go straight to like the left brain answer, which is the, having the data that shows us that 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 having these grazing ungulates are actually helping. If you know, it's not the how does it go? It's not the it's not the cow. It's the how. So more data around the how because cattle also you know can destroy landscapes. And same with bison. You know, people are talking about rewilding places for bison. Well, before we do that, we have to know that we. It's not the way, it will never be the way it used to be. And if those bison aren't managed really, really strategically, they will destroy the place. And so it's really, it's again, being responsible and accountable for any way we can get that data. Um, and, and actually, there's very little data coming off of the ungulate in terms of climate and soil and grass and all that health. There's a lot coming from the ground, soil, soil testing, carbon testing, diversity testing. We know, we know things that are important, but how do we measure it? Absolutely. Malu, tell us what's needed right now to help Teal Tags scale its positive impact in the world. Thank you. Um, well, we're building out our team right now and we are gonna start producing um, more of the, the current prototype we have right now. And so between those two things, there's uh, it's just we're constantly looking at different partners, just different strategic uh, and financial conservation partners to, to keep it in our conservation sector. And it's an important project. So, so yes, if anyone's interested, I'd definitely encourage you to go to the website, tealenterprises.org. Well, Malou, you and your family are such an inspiration. And I, I so applaud the, the ways that you're um, challenging convention in really constructive ways and helping us to connect the dots between landscapes and livestock and apex predators and climate indicators and biodiversity and riparian areas. It's so complex yet, um, yet so intuitive. And I think Teal Tags has a really important role to play in, in helping us to make that investment um, a, a reality. So thank you for the work you do in the world and, and keep it up. Mm, thank you, Lara. Likewise. <laughs>